What I'm giving tonight is startling. I hope that you are partially knowledgeable. I hope that you at least know somewhat of the fact that there is a plot for the destruction of your freedom. Otherwise, what is being said tonight could be very, very dangerous to your mental thought pattern. Surprise, we have the front to call this a debate because the minister didn't tell us any of the substance of the negotiations. But of course, there is no debate, is there? No debate in the national parliaments, no informed opinion in the press, no debate at all. And why? Because this whole treaty is being put together in secret. And that is being done because you don't want to involve the citizens of Europe. You're fearful that the more they find out about your grandiose plans, the more likely they are to vote no. And what's worse still, is the downright dishonesty with which this whole process is being pursued. For Angela Merkel in a letter to talk about the proposal to use different terminology without changing the legal substance. I mean, it's, it's Alice through the looking glass stuff, isn't it? It's the twisting of language. It is the deliberate attempt to stop there being free and fair referendums in European countries. It's your, it's your plan to act like a bulldozer, just to sweep aside the French referendum result, the Dutch referendum result, to pursue your political goals without taking the people with you. Well, I've no doubt you think that you're going to get away with it. But if you're proud of your European project, if you're true Democrats, then you join me in the call for let the people decide their own future. Don't foist it upon them. After 9-11, the U.S., Canada, and Mexico began what they call the Security and Prosperity Partnership, aimed at beefing up security on the borders without halting commerce. But some conservatives see it as a grand conspiracy by President Bush and others to erase our borders with Mexico and Canada and surrender our sovereignty to something called the North American Union. Today, I want to talk a little bit about Super NAFTA and what the Bush administration is planning to lock NAFTA in even tighter in this country and across the continent. Representatives of the United States, Canada and Mexico preparing for a summer meeting to further the goals of the Security and Prosperity Partnership of North America, the SPP, which many consider to be simply a blueprint for the North American Union, would weaken U.S. laws and regulations and diminish American sovereignty. Kitty Pilgrim has our report. President Bush, former Mexican President Vicente Fox, and former Canadian Prime Minister Paul Martin conceived the Security and Prosperity Partnership between the three countries in 2005. A summit is scheduled in Canada later this summer to flesh out more details, but current information on any agreements is scarce. The Security and Prosperity Partnership will deliver neither security nor prosperity for the simple reason that it's not so far been democratic. Most of the discussions have been taking place behind closed doors. Mr. Vice President, um, I just enjoyed so much your whole speech, but I was particularly pleased that you gave such a strong endorsement for the free trade agreement for all the Americas, subject that has been of great concern to me for many years, and particularly recently, and I think it's absolutely essential for the strength of our economy. The last thing the men behind the curtain want is a conscious, informed public capable of critical thinking, which is why a continually fraudulent zeitgeist is output via religion, the mass media, and the educational system. They seek to keep you in a distracted, naive bubble, and they are doing a damn good job of it. In 2005, an arrangement between Canada, Mexico, and the United States was made. This arrangement, unannounced to the public, unregulated by Congress, merges the United States, Mexico, and Canada into one entity, erasing all borders. It's called the North American Union. You might want to ask yourself why you've never heard of this. In fact, there is only one mainstream reporter who has actually heard of and has had the courage to cover this issue. The Bush administration's open borders policy and its uh, decision to ignore the enforcement of this country's immigration laws is part of a broader agenda. President Bush signed a formal agreement that will end the United States as we know it. And he took the step without approval from either the U.S. Congress or the people of the United States. What I'm about to say is fact. The secret organizations of the world power elite are no longer secret. 
They have planned and are now leading us into a one-world communist government. The combining of national governments started with the European Union. That union started with trade agreements, then a common currency, the euro, and now a European Parliament that is feverishly passing laws that uh, override the laws of, num of the member nations. A constitution was drafted but rejected by a few uh, of those nations, but never mind. They implemented it anyway. Now it's North America's turn. Building on the North American Free Trade Agreement, the NAFTA section of the Commerce Department is busy drafting laws and regulations for a North American Union, a union of Canada, America, and Mexico. The President has attended secret meetings and signed at least two agreements under the Security and Prosperity Partnership Program. Information leaked out about the meetings and now it is all in the open. No treaty has been signed, so Congress has not become involved. However, money from our Treasury is now being spent for this effort. We will have a new currency, the Amero, and a new constitution modeled on the Soviet Union's constitution. Our rights will not be inalienable, but they will be granted by government who can also take them away. Uh, the ultimate goal that these people have in mind is the goal to um, create a one world government run by the banking industry, run by the bankers. Where, and, and they're doing it in sections. The, the European currency, the euro, and, and the European constitution is one part of it. Now they're trying to do it in America with the North American Union, right? And they want to create a new currency called the Amero, right? And uh, the, whole, the, the whole agenda is to create a one world government where everybody has an, R, R, an RFID chip implanted in them. All money is to be um, in those chips, right? There'll be no more cash. And this is giving me straight from Rockefeller himself. This is what they want to accomplish. We need to think now for the future. Canada, the United States, and Ron, let me ask you this. What's a block, a secure block, and by the way, an uh, economic block, not, a, not one nation. Let me tell you why I'm in North Carolina today. I know you'll be interested. Today I had a meeting with people from the Federal Reserve, from the World Bank, from the National Association of Credit Unions. There is a face to free trade and to NAFTA. And that face, at least in, in Juarez, and I think all along the border with Mexico and other parts of Latin America, that face is in anguish. These trade agreements do not benefit poor people in Mexico. Well, here we were at the border, where on one side of the border, there are workers who are paid probably 10 times at least more than workers on the other side of the border for the same job. And of course that's why American companies and others want to cross the border so that they can pay people a non-living wage. And that's what I saw. NAFTA has resulted in the exploitation of the Mexican worker, the loss of jobs here in this country, and the only ones who have benefited quite frankly, are these multinational corporations which are engaged in this exploitation. A burning tractor in Mexico City's Plaza of the Revolution, part of a last-ditch effort by Mexican farm workers who say their livelihoods are going up in smoke. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm very pleased to be able to table a petition from a good number of constituents and other Canadians who are very concerned about the Security and Prosperity Partnership of North America which they say is really NAFTA on steroids. President, Mr. Barroso says, I think my team is of high quality. Well, let's conduct a human audit. Now, I'm mindful that audits aren't very popular in the European Commission, and that auditors, if they do their job properly, get fired, but nonetheless, here goes. From France, we have Mr. Jacques Barreau. He'll take on transport. In 2000, he received an eight-month suspended jail sentence for his involvement in an embezzlement case and was banned from holding public office for two years. From Hungary, we have Mr. Kovacs. He'll take on taxation. For many years, a communist apparatchik, a friend of Mr. Kadar, the dictator there, and an outspoken opponent of the values that we hold dear in the West. His new empire will produce <laughs> taxation policy and he'll look after the customs union from Cork across to Vilnius. Are the EPP and British Conservatives really going to vote for that? 
September the 11th, terror, 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 weapons of mass destruction. September the 11th, September the 11th, terrorists, the evil terrorists, 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 no. It's the third time I've said that. I'll probably say it three more times, see. In my line of work, you got to keep repeating things over and over and over again for the truth to sink in, to kind of catapult the propaganda. We have lived as if in a trance. We have lived as people in fear. And now, our rights and our freedoms in peril, we slowly awaken to learn that we have been afraid of the wrong thing. Therefore, tonight have we truly become the inheritors of our American legacy. For on this first full day that the Military Commissions Act is in force, we now face what our ancestors faced at other times of exaggerated crisis and melodramatic fear-mongering, a government more dangerous to our liberty than is the enemy it claims to protect us from.